For our 50th wedding anniversary this year, we decided to take a cruise around the British Isles. The cruise lasted for a fortnight and for packing for British summer was really a little bit of a challenge. For the cruise, we first of all called at Belfast, went to Killybags, and then we went up to the islands, which was absolutely lovely. Our ship was the P&O ship Arcadia, and she's an old ship, but quite nice. For our luggage, we sent ahead to Southampton, and because driving there, spending the night beforehand was a good plan, because that meant we had an easy turnaround to make sure we got to the ship on time and the car was safe parked in their hotel car park. The hotel itself was basic, um, was very pleasant. However, there was no fridge in the room, which was a little bit disappointing. And uh, mm, I found there was only one small window, but quite pleasant. The port at Southampton is really quite large, as you would expect, and there were large queues forming outside the departure lounge. However, we were lucky in the fact that David had booked us through and we had a relatively easy transfer onto the ship to cabin 112. This was a balcony cabin, and as you can see, just under the balcony were the tops of the ship's tenders. More of those later. Southampton itself had a lot of memories for me. The last time I'd been was when I was a nine-year-old child returning from Cyprus and I remember clearly seeing the old Queen Mary docked at a moorside. The ship itself is well appointed, cabins comfortable and lovely outside lifts as you can see, which, where you could see all the outside Friday, seascape. It was relatively easy to navigate around and after a day or so we truly had both our sea legs and our bearings. This is the ship departing. Southampton and just looking looking at the amazing size of the ship and the way it can be maneuvered is really quite exceptional. The ship itself had as you see a large outside swimming pool and it also had um, a smaller a larger still swimming pool that was covered by a removable cover. But we found some lovely places to stand on board, watch the sea and watch us depart Southampton. That's the cover of the uh, larger indoor swimming pool. You can see at the edge of the screen there. Well, this is a shot of our cabin, lovely roses David bought me to welcome us on board. As you see, the weather here is beautiful. So this is the Belfast Heid Highlights and Titanic exhibition, which was absolutely fascinating. A little difficult to navigate around because unfortunately, we um, 
could, didn't know exactly how big the museum was to actually get out of the museum in time to catch our coach for the next trip. So the afternoon we went to a lovely, lovely um, stone, stone Age um, settlement, which was fascinating. Back to Belfast, you can see how they set up the uh, the key to welcome us. You could see it was a bit of a challenge too because the facilities weren't uh, totally wonderful, but they they made do. They made do. Fixing the gang plant to great excitement. This is a view of Belfast with all the bridges and some of the local landmarks that we saw after our visit to the Titanic exhibition. Some wonderful wall murals and we were taken down the Shanklin Road and as you can see the murals, peace murals hopefully, still across the wall that still divides the city. The entry ticket to the Titanic Museum was quite interestingly a replica of a first-class pass and it was a very interactive, interesting museum. That would have been the equivalent of our ta cabin on the Titanic. For the next day, we went to Killybegs. Killybegs was an absolutely lovely, lovely place in Southern Ireland. Very picturesque, very beautiful. And we sailed in and again, we'd bought, bought another day trip out on a coach to help us get more of the feel of the place and see a little bit more than we could do by simply walking around the town. As you see, it's a very, very beautiful part of the country. We took the day trip at Killybegs and uh, it's on the, uh, it's in County Donegal and its Irish name means little cells, which gives an indication of the early monastic settlements. Just going down, down the lift, I think probably to disembark the ship. Beautiful, beautiful, peaceful scene, just as I imagined Ireland would be. Killybegs was a really, really uh, poor place to live and uh, has some history with the Spanish Armada where three ships came into the harbour and the bay. However, only one remained afloat and it left with 1,300 men on board but then unfortunately sank on a, in a storm outside Antrim. Our main visit in the morning was the Glen Colmoli folk village. Fascinating place. This is a collection of cottages, thatch cottages, in which each house has been rebuilt from other locations and furnished in the right, the right setting for their time period. This is some of the beautiful scenery that we saw on the way there. All the local people have donated artefacts and uh, information about the cottages and 
so we saw a huge amount. That plaque was made from stones from every part of Ireland. This is the village, which is lovely. It was the idea of a father Makadaya. He lobbied for years for more local amenities to try and stop the dreadful unemployment in the in the area. And it was his idea to develop and build a folk village to give Killybags and the, the village, of course, some reasons for tourists to visit, provide local amenities, provide a place of work, and of course, to fund the local economy. We certainly did our bit. In the craft shop, I bought a wonderful Donegal tweed wrap, which will keep me cozy in the winter. I remember those patchwork quilts from my childhood, so that makes me feel quite old, but not quite the lack of amenities most of the cottages had. As you see, it's visitor friendly and uh, the wheelchair chair access is pretty good. The tea room was absolutely wonderful with homemade scones and a local band playing live music. It was quite an experience. And so we left Killybegs. I feel we should be playing some music some Irish music across these scenes, but it does give a really good impression of being afloat on a large ship and viewing Ireland, which is wonderful. The ship itself is quite an old lady. Uh, she's an adults only ship and uh, she has accommodating accommodation for over just over 2,000 guests with about just over a thousand crew um, with restaurants, cafes, uh, 12 bars and lounges and as I said two swimming pools. There's also a number of shops which is great fun and uh, a beauty salon, a spa and a fitness centre. Finding the way around the ship is, is okay once you get that, the hang of it, um, but it took us a little while to find our sea legs. I can never imagine people not wanting to look at the sea and the sunsets. Our next excursion was to the Bosta Iron Age settlement. This is where we had to take the tenders trip to Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis. As you can see, the tender outside our cabin was lowered on the hoists together with its three sister tender ships uh, to provide transport for us to reach the land. It was quite a long journey by the boat and it was a little bit too exciting because halfway over the alarm bells and whistles and klaxon was sounding and the ship was taking on water and listed to the port. We expected the pilot of the boat just to say it's fine folks we'll get there but no what he was doing was panicking and calling the bridge. We eventually limped in to the to the harbour and we were a little late going to the Buster Iron Age settlement. This is an Iron Age house that's been rebuilt from a location that was going to be very, very flooded. And as you can see, we had a lovely trek 
over the sand dunes to reach the house. It was very wet that day. You can see we've all got our max on and we were lucky to do this on the morning trip because by the afternoon, those visitors couldn't reach the house and it was fully flooded. So we were very lucky. The house is underneath that turf. You can see a longer view of that there. All in all, very cosy, extremely interesting, with a brilliant guide who's explaining why they did that, why they built it like this, and why they actually don't know what a certain room is for. But you can just imagine the family sitting round. We had a long delay getting back to the ship, but we were relieved to get there and to be able to get on our way to go to Lowick. Now, Lowick on Shetland is somewhere I've always wanted to go to. It's a beautiful little village, beautiful little town, I should say. And of course, is made famous, famous by the TV Shetland series. We managed to identify where Jimmy Perez supposedly lives. I'm fascinated to see on the coach trip some of the scenes that we recognised from the TV, or thought we recognised from the TV series. So we went to Jalshof. Incredible place. What they've done is they've excavated settlements of various periods going through the ages. So you start off with a really, really, um, really, really old uh, roundhouse uncovered and going through the ages, through a long house and up to the 16th century manor that you can see is uh, ruined at the top there. Mind-blowing place, wonderful. And uh, we were able to visit craft shops as well and uh, thoroughly enjoy that day. And so we set sail for the next, for our next stop. It's David uh, relaxing in one of our favourite coffee spots which was the crow's nest and as its name suggests, has a brilliant view. This is a swimming pool where I managed an outdoor swim in the Irish Sea, which was a bit exciting because it's the, the waves started to swirl and swell, but it was uh, lovely to actually swim again. Nice company too. There were some lovely ladies we were chatting and also a gentleman joined us a little later. And once you were in, it wasn't as cold as you thought it might have been. You can't go on holiday without having your swimsuit on, at least once, I feel. As you see, there's uh, quite a lot of people around on that Sunday. So we went through to our next port of Gaul, call, which was Invergaul. Coming in, you could see obviously uh, indications of the um, industry, and we stopped at an absolutely wonderful uh, place. Was uh, Dornoch. And this was a beautiful, beautiful cathedral church there. And the tour guide knew quite a lot about the church, about the wonderful stained glass windows and um, the murals that were there and the decoration. And also let us in on the secret that Madonna had her baby christened there the day before she got married at the nearby castle, which was uh, Castle K 
Harpers Tale. Very interesting place, going to see the falls there. Should have been the Salmon Leap at the wrong time of year, of course. And quite sad that the original funding that the council had given to build a coach stop and amenities were now closed as the funding had ceased. So we were to go to Kirkwall, which was where David really, really wanted to go. But unfortunately, we couldn't dock there because of a very strong offshore wind. And despite the tug's efforts, we could not be uh, towed into the harbour. And uh, it was judged too, too dangerous in fact, to, to land. So we had an unexpected day at sea, which was lovely because I loved sea days. There was an incredible, incredible uh, classical pianist on the ship who gave us wonderful recitals together with information about the composers, information about the music. And there was also an ex-metropolitan metropolitan, chief inspector who gave terrific talks and so we managed to then dock at Invergordon. We went to the uh, Inverary Castle which is a beautiful beautiful castle and uh, so homely and comforting you could really imagine living and there I bought a wonderful, wonderful Scottish tweed hat that goes terrifically well with my Irish tweed cape, which I was delighted with. That's the haunted bed where a wandering minstrel, a minstrel from the castle, was supposedly slain as he was playing music for the castle laird's enemies. Beautiful landscapes, beautiful scenery, and a lovely coach trip afterwards and going to see Inverary with a fascinating church with a tiny, tiny three octave organ which would seem impossible to play for normal church services. This is a scene of the one of the, the coaches with everybody returning to the ship. And so going down to Wales, this time landing at Hollyhead, where, because we know the area really quite well, we took a coach tour back to a memorable trip to the Fistiniod Railway. We've been on this railway decades before, and so it was lovely to go back and remember who we'd gone with, I just have a reminiscence. See the, the wagons of coal. To get onto the Festennial, we had driven to Port Maddock. And uh, Port Maddock is where the Highland Railway, the Festennial Railway, and also the Mainline Railway meet. So it's a real terminus of trains. The Festennial is just as I remembered it lovely tiny carriages, wonderful scenery and a very entertaining trip. And for us it was really excellent to know that it had actually been extended to go up to Festeniog. So we could get off at the end of the trip, return to our coach for a lovely coach tour back through the countryside as we returned to the ship. The volunteers do a terrific job on this railway, keeping everything so clean and as tidy as that they do. It's lovely to be on a steam train. Lots of chatter, it seemed, and lots of people have been on this railway before, 
and uh, we're coming for a return visit. But it was good to see that it's been extended and the actual line is doing very well. And you can see a lot of people and anxious to get on the train and without going on the final street stretch up to festival. The scenery, as you can see, is simply beautiful. This was an original working train taking straight from the mines down to Madden. So an established and back at sea. For dining, we had a table of six and we met the same couples each evening, which was really very nice. That was a brief picture of us at the table on our last night. We then had another day at sea and then we returned to Southampton after 14 days. And you can see us docking there. I would recommend a tour down around the British Isles. It was a lovely experience and who knows we may be able to repeat it in years to come. Oh, that's the dock where the Queen Mary was born that I remembered so long ago. The stewards actually interrupt the children's tea time to get us up on deck to see it. So I felt quite nostalgic coming back. This is the, the ramp to embark and disembark. And so we motored home the next day. Crow's Nest, where they have beautiful coffee, lovely views, and you're able to sit and relax. Very quiet during the day, but it's a lively nightclub venue in the evening. David's added some comments on how he felt about the ship, and I do agree with his, uh, his, his statements. The, certainly the uh, tender breaking down at, Storm, at uh, that Stornoway was absolutely dreadful, as he said. its faults I thought we had a beautiful beautiful holiday and of course when something goes a bit awry you just have to deal with it rise up rise above it and take the parts of the journey was which was so good food waiters entertainment cabins hot water and company, just wonderful.